What's going on guys? Welcome back to DCS World. Welcome back aboard the Hornet for another tutorial video. In this one, we're going to take a look at landing on the aircraft carrier. Now, landing the Hornet or any carrier capable jet on the aircraft carrier is probably one of the most challenging things you can do in DCS, uh, right up there with air to air refueling. Both of those tasks are considered among the most challenging things to get right and get very consistent at. But uh, we're going to try to break it down today and uh, see if we can't make it as simple as possible. Now, I need to preface this video by saying there's going to be a lot of do as I say, not as I do in this video. I am by no means an expert at landing on the aircraft carrier. My uh, case one patterns are rarely as clean as they should be, um, but uh, we'll see what we can do. I'm going to try to describe the right way to do just about everything, but I may not demonstrate it as accurately as some folks may. So just take some of my actual flying here with a grain of salt and just, like I said, do as I say, not as I do. However, uh, let's give it a shot, shall we? So we need to do a few things. We're currently floating here in the middle of the Black Sea. Let, let's sort of pretend we've just come back from our mission. I actually have the sim in active pause right now, so we have some time to get set up. We need to do a few things to get ourselves set up for landing. So uh, coming back from a mission, we want to, of course, make sure that our master arm is set to safe. Uh, we're going to want to flip our radar to standby and we are going to want to flip our altitude switch, our altimeter switch here from barometric to radar. And we also want to make sure that our radar altimeter is set to an altitude that makes sense. I'm using 500 feet in this case because 500 feet is going to be effectively the pattern altitude for the turn to final towards the carrier. So I'm going to know if I get below that too early. So that's what that's there to help me. Uh, let's also put our HSI here on the right DDI. And on the left DDI, let's grab our uh, right there. Let's grab our HUD repeater. OK. Now, to actually find the carrier, we're going to use TACAN. So by default, the USS John C. Stennis is CVN-74, and most of the time its TACAN frequency is going to be 74 X-ray. So we're going to enter 74 here in the UFC, and then we're going to turn our TACAN on. And if we look over at the HSI, we can see that the Stennis, the carrier's TACAN signal is actually right about there, sort of in front of us. Okay. We also are going to want to set something called BRC, or Base Recovery Course. Now, what does this mean? The Base Recovery Course is effectively the heading that the Stennis is traveling. So the Stennis is moving. It's a moving carrier. It's moving at about 11 knots, uh, and I have it set to drive into the wind. So we have a headwind of about 7 to 10 knots. So that should equal about a 20-knot headwind over the deck, effectively. It's driving into the wind, and I know from mission planning that the BRC, or base recovery course of the carrier, is about 348 degrees. So we can actually set that in our TACAN. If we go here and we select TACAN as our nav mode here, and we go to this CRS course switch, we're going to set the TACAN course to 348. Okay, so we see C cell or course select at 348 degrees. So that should have the TACAN course pointed roughly down the center line of the carrier in the direction that it's facing. And once again, this is known as the BRC or base recovery course. The actual landing deck is going to be offset from the base recovery course about uh, eight degrees to the left. But you'll see what that looks like in a minute. Do remember that this is a slanted angled landing deck. 
So we are not going to be landing at this course. This course is going to help set us up for the initial approach. We're also going to lower our tail hook. Uh, we're going to do this now so we don't forget later. Uh, one other disclaimer I want to say is by no means am I following the proper naval NATOPS procedures for this base uh, for this case one recovery course. Um, I am by no means a naval aviator and I don't expect anyone actually flying in DCS to follow all of the proper NATOPS uh, procedures down to the letter. What I'm demonstrating here is going to give you the basics of what you need to fly the case one recovery course and uh, hopefully land on the carrier without exploding. That's my goal for today. And uh, just to go back, what do I mean when I say case one recovery? Case one just means a good weather, daylight, VFR, visual flight rules landing on the carrier. This is to be in contrast with case two and case three, which Case 2 is sort of marginal weather, and Case 3 is either nighttime or bad weather. We'll demonstrate a Case 3 in a later video. But for now, let's continue on with this Case 1. So I'm going to unpause the sim, and we're actually going to fly towards the carrier. So come out of active pause. We're at 16,000 feet. The carrier is about 30 miles, 35 miles ahead of us here. So I'm actually going to start descending down. We want to approach the carrier group, which is to say the carrier group is a group of ships, including the aircraft carrier, roughly at its center. We're going to want to approach the carrier group uh, around 2,000 feet or so. So we're just going to fly and descend down can actually see the ships out in front of us there. Very clear day. And uh, because we're a few minutes away still, I might skip time until we're actually above the carrier group. All right, so we're flying just in front of the carrier now. You can see the aircraft carrier down there is moving forward. What we are going to do is we're going to fly opposite the direction of the carrier to put ourselves about five to ten miles behind it. You can also notice there's another ship out here that's trailing the carrier. We can actually use that ship as a bit of a landmark to sort of get ourselves lined up with the ship as we fly back in. But we want to get a distance of about five, five or more miles that'll allow us to set up well. And we also want to descend down to an altitude of about 1,000 feet above the water. So stand by while I do that, and we'll get ourselves turned around, flying back towards the boat. And uh, we'll probably take a quick pause and just talk about some things. All right, so quick pause here while we're uh, about two and a half miles behind the boat, and we're just over the trailing ship. A couple of things we need to do. The pattern to landing is going to happen very, very quickly. So... I'm going to try my best to explain things as they happen and maybe do a couple of quick pauses during which, and hopefully I don't screw it up, but it may happen. So you'll notice we're actually lined up on our TACAN course and we're basically pointed right at the carrier. So that's good. We are on the BRC now, the basic recovery course. We're going to want to make our speed about 350 knots. Somewhere between 325 and 350 is best. We're going to pass over the carrier and then break across the front of it. This is known as the carrier overhead break, or in some cases it's called the carrier fan break if you're in formation. We are going to break to the left. So what we're going to do is we're going to roll 90 degrees to our left and pull up at about three and a half G. Now this G number is going to get relaxed as we slow down because Simultaneously, as we pull, we're going to reduce the throttle to idle and we're going to put out our speed brake. So we're going to slow down from 350 knots very, very rapidly. And what you want to do is maintain a sort of pull on your joystick 
of about 1% G of airspeed, or G equal 1% of airspeed. So for example, at 350 knots, I want to pull 3.5 G. If I'm slowed to 300 knots, I want to pull 3 G, and so on and so forth. You're going to relax your pull and start to level out towards the downwind leg of the pattern, uh, aiming to basically get to on-speed AOA once you're on the downwind leg. Simultaneously, once we get below 250 knots in the turn, we're going to throw our gear down and put our flaps to full pretty much at the exact same time. So again, this is going to happen very, very quickly. We're going to approach the initial point of the course at about 800 feet, and we want to aim to be on the downwind leg at 600 feet. So you're gonna be slightly descending a little bit in the turn. And again, I'm gonna to try to demonstrate this as best I can, but I may not get my altitudes perfect. So just bear that in mind. So with all that said, let's see how we do here. I need to actually slow down and get a little bit lower before we cross over the carrier. So let's see if I can do it. So unpausing now. So I'm going to try to maintain 350 knots or thereabout. Okay, there's about 800 feet. 342 knots is fine. Passing over the carrier now and brake. Throttle to idle, speed brake out, pulling about three and a half G, relaxing the pull as I turn. 250 knots, gear and flaps coming out, keeping the speed brake out, and trying to maintain 600 feet now as we get to on-speed AOA. Okay, speed brake coming in. I'm getting a little low, and I'm just going to quickly pause. So that was... that wasn't too bad, but I just want to... I want to, again, briefly go over what just happened there. So our initial approach at 800 feet as we crossed over the carrier, we broke in front of the carrier to the left, pulling a 3.5G turn and relaxing it as our airspeed decreases. The G of our turn wanted to be about 1% of airspeed, so I did the best I could to relax the turn as we slowed down to maintain 1% of airspeed. Below 250 knots, drop the gear, drop the flaps. And on the downwind leg here is when we want to establish ourselves in an on-speed AOA configuration. If you remember from my shore landing video, uh, how we get to on-speed AOA using the AOA indexer as well as the E-bracket on the HUD, I'm not going to go over that too in-depth, but being on-speed AOA is going to be very, very important for final approach. So here we are downwind. We're about to beam the end of the carrier here. We're going to fly forward a little bit, about, uh, you know, maybe another quarter of a mile, and then we're going to start our turn to final. So what's going to happen then is we're at about 540 feet now, and our turn to final, we're going to descend very, very slightly, probably to about 400 feet once we're behind the carrier. And then we're going to pause there uh, and just talk about what the actual final approach is going to look like. So we're going to unpause here, and hopefully, uh, once again, I don't screw it up. So I'm just keeping my speed, trying to trim for on-speed AOA. There it is. Okay, we're going to turn towards the carrier now. Try not to let my altitude fall. I wanted to stay above 500 there, actually. So the turn is going to be relatively gentle from downwind to final because we're not coming in at 350 knots. We're actually down at about 140-something, right? Ear flaps down. We're going to get behind the boat here. Start to level out behind the boat. And try not to climb here. That's always going to be tricky. And we're on final. So let's just quickly pause.
okay? We're on final. We're about three quarters of a mile behind the boat, okay? A couple of things we need to look at. I'm zoomed in here so we can see what the profile looks like. We're aimed down the landing deck. A couple of things I want to point out. In fact, I'm going to halt my camera right there. So we're roughly on speed AOA. This is what we want to maintain all the way down to touchdown. On the landing deck itself are four arrestor wires. They are uh, numbered one, two, three, and four from back to front. And what we want to do is we want to aim for the third wire. The third wire is ideal because it's the, essentially putting us down in the middle of the deck and it is, uh, it's just considered the best wire to grab because it uh, is basically right smack in the center. Uh, any wire is good for most cases, but uh, again, you're going to want to aim for the third wire. It's called a three-wire landing, and it's what you want to get. Now, uh, on the side of the carrier itself, notice this little guy here. A little hard to see, but we've got two green lines and then an orange circle in the middle, an orange dot. This thing is called the Improved Fresnel Lens Optical Landing System, or IFLALS also known as the meatball or simply the ball. You can think of this as a really, really precise version of the PAPI, Precision Approach Path Indicators, for the shore. So you notice the, the four lights that sometimes appear next to a runway on a field airport, you know, on land, that sort of help us maintain a proper glide slope. This helps us maintain a proper glide slope but to a much more precise degree. So what you'll actually see is this orange ball, the, the orange part itself is called the meatball, will dip below the green lights, also known as the datum line, or it might go above the green lights. If it's above the green lights, it means we are above glide slope. If it's below the green lights, it means we are below glide slope. If the ball turns red, it means we are dangerously below glide slope and should probably... Uh, go full power and wave off. If it is red above the glide slope, we should probably wave off again. But uh, we're going to do our best here to not wave off. Uh, you're going to want to try to fly to place your path vector roughly kind of right where my mouse is on the boat here. It's a somewhat of a case of put the thing on the thing, put the path indicator on the boat here itself, but you also have to maintain your AOA and you also have to maintain your glide slope. So it's a lot to balance and a lot to juggle when you're actually trying to put this down. So we're going to see how we do here. I'm going to unpause and try to put it down. Um, actually, before I do that, one last thing I want to uh, talk about. If we do commit to a landing and we're going to put our wheels down on the boat, as soon as we touch down, and it's going to be a very violent touchdown. We don't flare this landing whatsoever. As soon as we touch down, we're going to immediately firewall the throttles. Why do we do that? Well, there are cases where your tail hook could miss one of the wires and you won't actually trap the landing and stay on the boat. And if you're not at full power, you're going in the water. So you need to be at full power as soon as you touch down, just in case your hook misses the wires so that you can safely take off again and go around to try again. This is known as a bolter. So if you hear me say bolter, 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 that means I missed the wire and need to go around again. All right, that's a lot of talking. Let's, uh, let's try and do it, all right? Um, I don't know how well this is going to go. Let me unpause my camera here, get stabilized, and unpause. So here we go. Going to need to play with the throttles here quite a bit to stay on speed. Actually not looking too bad here. Maybe a little high. A little power, a little power, not too much power. Touchdown, full throttle. And we trapped so we can go back to idle. And let's just take a quick look outside. And I crabbed the two wire that time. So here's your one wire, two wire, three wire, four wire. I touched down and snagged the two wire. So that wasn't too bad. All right. 
Now that was pretty disjointed because of all the pausing, so we're gonna reset and I'm going to do another approach, uh, this time with no pauses, just so you can see what it looks like from start to finish. All right, so stand by while we get set up for that. All right, so we're back here. We're lining up for the initial. I'm just coming up behind the boat here about four miles, getting down to 800 feet. And getting ourselves lined up with the BRC. And my speed's actually a little low, so I'm gonna speed up a little bit. Right about there is good enough. Passing over the boat. Got a little fast. And we're gonna break. A little hard. It's okay though. As long as we relax the pull, 250 knots, gear and flaps coming out, holding that speed brake out. I got a little bit low there, so it's all right. Get ourselves trimmed for on speed on the downwind. And start our turn to final. And a holder steady, keeping on speed throughout the turn. And slot in nice behind the boat. And rest our descent just a little bit here. And start to level out. All right, we're set up behind the boat. Keep that on speed. Looking for the meatball. A little low. All right. We've called the ball, fly it right down, put the thing on the thing, a little power. Power back, keeping it on there, a little power. Keeping it, keeping it all the way down. And that's a trap. Full power, back to idle, let's see what we got. And that there is a four wire. So yeah, that's a look at the case one recovery on an aircraft carrier um, using just kind of a lot of the basics. Uh, it brings it all together. You know, a lot of your flying ability, the ability to control the Hornet at high AOA, the ability to maintain on speed AOA when landing. It's uh, it's kind of the ultimate test. So. I'm going to highly recommend you get out there, you practice, you practice some more, and when you're done with that, you practice some more. It's going to take a lot of practice to get this right and to get your altitudes and speeds uh, more or less correct. As you saw, mine were by no means perfect, but uh, even if they're a little off, you can still get it down, but again, practice is going to make perfect, and in the real world, uh, they kind of don't tolerate anything less than perfection because you get graded on these landings. But uh, yeah, get out there and practice, guys. I really mean it. Um, but I hope you enjoyed that, and I will see you for the next video. Take care.